Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to helping accounting professionals start and build the premier accounting firms in their areas and get paid what they're worth. It's in this podcast that we actually invite the guests on each and every week to share their expertise as to how we can be doing things better to actually offer quality accounting services. The discussions range from marketing, selling to tech stacks, mental health, and so much more. And I invite you to listen each and every week for this. Today, I happen to have a great guest, someone I've been looking forward to speaking with. It's Marie Speakman. Marie happens to be a chartered accountant from the UK. She has a great experience where she, after selling her accounting business in 2009, began focusing on helping companies enhance their operations and finance procedures. In fact, in 2020, she became introduced to an AI company. And from there, Marie's goal now is to actually provide insights, demystify AI, and support everyone in every step of the way. With that in mind, Marie also happens to be someone that when she's not working, loves the vibrant Aleutian lifestyle and is hiking in the mountains, strolling along the beaches and discovering new wonders around the world. Her next destination and adventure happens to be Japan. So I'm excited to discuss that as well. So Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for the invite, Roger. You're very welcome. Now, as an accounting professional, I want to go back a little bit to your accounting business that you sold in 2009. Give us a little bit of that background. What brought you to the accounting profession? And in fact, what led up to you actually starting your business? Um, I was in, I was working in corporate and I, I worked in the accounting, uh, always in, in the finance department, working my way up from uh, credit control. I started in credit control to management accountant and uh, left that company and then did a management buyout with one of the divisions, which was quite exciting um, at the time, but it didn't quite work out for me with the the people that were involved in in that management buyout. But then I was offered a job with a a software company, um, which I was was very interested in tech at, at that time. So I thought that was quite Um, an interesting move for me. So I joined um, a tech company and I became the European financial controller. Um, And I probably had, I thought, God, I've got, I've got the best job in the world here. It was, uh, I'd got a great boss. My colleagues were fantastic. I was traveling to the European offices. I was more or less, my, my boss just said, just do the job get on with it, I know you can do it. And I was, my remit then was we're bringing, we had seven offices around Europe and we were bringing them all onto one to Microsoft Dynamics. Okay. So that was my main remit when I started that job. So I was going around to like, one day I'd be in Amsterdam, in Paris, in Milan. So then we had an office in, um, North, the north of Spain, um, Denmark, so Germany. So it was like, well, where shall I go today? What do I need to do? And then I spent my time in the office in Bolton. So I got, I got very used to the remote kind of working because I needed to, to work remotely then. But it was then we were dialing, we were dialing into and working on a remote desktop app, which was could be quite stressful when you were needed to get something done. It was never that stable. Uh, so that was well, that was my kind of first taste of, of remote working. So when you actually went from selling your business into this CFO role, obviously you, you got to travel. I love the travel that you're doing. I like to show the, uh, the appealing side of the accounting world, and that's always nice when you can incorporate that for those who enjoy that. But AI came into this quite strong a number of years ago and clearly today is a topic of discussion i'm curious how you saw ai back then applying to the accounting world how was it relevant it was only so after the the fantastic european job it was before that i'd got this job it was in my mind to be uh, to set my own business up it was and it kept really nagging away at me so i set the practice up and it was after i sold my practice and I was doing some consulting work that I was approached by my ex-boss from the software company. He said, I've got something here that I think you'll be great for and you'll be really interested in it. And it was working with an AI company because they were unsure about the kind of the finance function and how that, how that everything fitted in to the operations and the finance. So I was 
given the opportunity then in 2020 to work with an AI company um, and work alongside them. And we developed um, a software, um, a debt collection um, process, which we we fully we fully automated, and that's now de been deployed in local governments um, in the UK. Very good. So obviously, it was focusing initially on the debt collection, but from an accounting perspective, we're wondering how might AI actually impact us on a daily work level or on the tasks that we're performing. Do you have any perspectives on what AI might be doing to address those? Yes. Yeah, so. So from then, my interest was just like sparked and it was like, well, what can AI? So I went on to a, a real kind of learning from 2020. And my focus was very much, well, because when I was in practice, I did struggle, to be honest. I was forever trying to meet deadlines. Um, you know, there's like peaks and troughs in, in the actual workload. And I was thinking, this is great. This this is this could be really great for accountants um, to apply this into your to your company. And the main the main one that I'm I've kind of seen, and the most the one that's been most used is the the bots for bookkeeping. Okay. Um, the bookkeeping the bookkeeping bots. Um, but now. I think that what we where we are in account in in the accountancy world is that the compliance work we're going to be able to pretty much automate the compliance. And Can you give an example now, of what that might be? Um, well, definitely bookkeeping, reconciliations, anything that you could train um, a trainee to do, then you can train a bot to do that, and it can it can do do the work for you. So any anything that you can map out, if you can map that process out, you can train, you can train the bots to do it. Now, what I've realized, and I'm curious if you have an, uh, an insight on this, is when we started to see ChatGPT or BARD and these others come on the scene, at, initially the impression was, is we needed to engage with the AI. We need to go in and ask the prompts and through those interchange or that exchange actually get information and have the AI interpret information for us. And then hopefully you could actually create programs that you could use the AI to automate processes. The challenge is that was all on the individual. It was requiring each of us to get in and kind of go to a programming level. What I've noticed is very quickly as a lot of the tools and interfaces that we use as our tech stacks they've individually started to incorporate AI into those platforms and they've done the, the heavy lifting so as to help us as accounting professionals use whatever software platforms we're already familiar with, leveraging AI within them. And so a lot of these uh, various tech stack companies, um, the, the various companies we might be using to do our work, they're now putting into their processes the AI function. Are you seeing that that's where we as accounting professionals are going to have access to this artificial intelligence to help us do the compliance work as you're describing? Yeah, definitely. That's before there's been, you can, you could get a bot to do that. You could train your own bot, mm -hmm. but it would be done by um, an AI company. I would always introduce accountants to an AI company and, you know, like I said, we're not, we want to make sure with what we're doing that we get every, everything right and spot on. So I would work, we would introduce an AI company to the accountant. Now, since then, the this was before the like the likes of Zero and that realized that we've got to get we've got to get on this. And now they've introduced like RPA into the uh, robotic process automations into their software. Excellent so example. In, yeah. Yeah. So that is um, that is where we where we are now. So yeah, to take the ever lifting, are the I mean most accountants in practice, you just don't you don't have the time really to find out what's going on. I mean when people talk AI, it's very very it's a, a massive term. It's very general. Can you make it more specific for us in the accounting space then? The things that. Um, I mean, the, the, the one that's been being used for quite a while in the accounting space is the robotic process automation. So that is just having your own 
like what I would say, your own trainee, training them, and they you can get them to do whatever tasks you want them to do, and the same way you would train, like say a trainee. So that's that's the kind of the simplest form of AI, the the RPA, the robotic process. Um, what I'm really interested in now is more the because we're, we're moving from compliance, yeah, it's still got to be done, but accountants are moving into the advisory and they have seen the benefit of that, but it's not, it's the benefit for the client because I don't know about a lot of accountants, but a lot that I see, and this is when I started off, I was like, I want to be the advisor. I'm a management accountant. I'm a, you know, I've got all these skills and I want to go out and I want to advise these, these companies but you get bogged down in the the day to day and the, the compliance work, and you forever trying to meet deadlines. And now I think we've got a massive opportunity. Well, let me jump in there because I think you're you're bridging what I think is really apparent. One is that the compliance work is going to be impacted by the AIs. So you took zero for example. You spoke of zero taking the AI and leveraging it to help basically create automations that we can uh, use in our business to get the work done more efficiently and and uh, quickly. Well, the point is, is that then frees up our time, hopefully to move more into that advisory space. And now AI can be leveraged there to do some of the analysis. But it does beg the question, how protected is the information it's either analyzing or that we're providing for it to analyze in the sense that we don't want to upload our clients' financial information onto the open web and there let the AI analyze it. We want to do it in in an enclosed environment so that that information remains proprietary. So the AI is still able to interpret and give us an analysis that we can then use with our clients, but it's got to be done in a secure environment. So do you have any comments regarding securing the data so that we don't have to worry about it becoming... um, basically open to the world rather than intellectual property. What, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not a fan of um, ChatGPT. Yeah, it's got issues as a tool to actually, you know, ask it something. It's it, To me, it's like you to use it like a bigger Google is the only way that I would ever use Chat G, uh, ChatGPT. Um, because it is open, it's an it's open source. So we should never be putting anything, any any personal data or anything into ChatGPT ever. I mean, you can delete conversations, but but what we're seeing now is um, one of the companies that I'm working with were you've got to it's with the generative AI, which is great. But it's it's generating your own. So with your own data, you generate that to give you the analysis that you want that is personal to your company. So I would never advocate um, chat GPT ever. So just to be clear, we want to be very sensitive to what data we're putting into these various chat bots for them to analyze and give us information back about because it could be putting that out into the open uh, source area, and we just want to not make our clients vulnerable in that re- regard. Yeah. So that's very important. All right. So when you're working with accounting professionals, what kind of questions do they ask you as it relates to AI? There's very much a mystery around it. And I just think a lot of people, and I was exactly the same when I started, when I started working with the the data science and the tech guy, I just couldn't get my head around it and I couldn't understand it. Um, so they're, they're exactly, you know, the conversations that I have with accountants is, and once they see it at work, you know, if you see a bot at work, um, that is what I would say is always, you just start small, you start with some, um, kind of automation. And then from that, you can, you know, you can do, you can more or less do whatever. I think it's, you can like join the dots within your practice because any, We've all got the, this software, you know, and accountants have got a lot of software now, a lot more than I had. Um, but there's always gaps in between. So it's a matter of, you know, let's say one accountant who's very tech savvy um, and he just want, he's looking to automate everything. So we just wanted, say, 
um, is data going from one place to another that the software wasn't able to do. So you can just get a bot to do that. So there's no manual um, intervention. All right. So give us an example of how a traditional accountant would actually change their workflow to incorporate AI. I, I, the example you just shared, I would consider that similar to a Zapier type thing. I'm taking information and using a, an AI I'm uh, or an API, I should say, I'm integrating that data into another platform and I'm migrating it through using Zapier. But what you're talking about is a little bit more uh, intelligent in the sense that the computer is able to make decisions as to where that data ends up and where it, where it gets applied. Can you give some examples of how that is in real world for the accounting professional uh, advantageous and helpful? Um, it is It is very rules-based. I mean, the only way that we're going to get um, the big advantage is going to be with the generative AI. So the things that we're seeing now, but it's, it's a matter of Whatever you want it to do, you can, as long as you can map it out, you can get it. Can you give an example of what the accountant would would see different in their day-to-day operations using AI? Well, what you would see was that as soon as something came in, it would be being, it's dealt with. There's no kind of time lag. So we've got, it's it's action straight away. I think that's one of the, the, the biggest the big advantage so we can kind of we can be working in real time um so you're not waiting for somebody to reconcile something it's it's being done as it as it happens okay so if i'm a client and i'm running my business and i have transactions going on i you know have my point of sale i've got uh, invoices coming in i'm running my business as an accountant, I'm back at the office and I'm remotely interested in taking that information and recording those transactions and over the course of the month, building the financial reports. How's the AI inter- interacting between me, the client, and the accountant where the accountant is seeing the the efficiency, the, the win, the gain of what's happening in the client's workspace and how it's applying to the financials that the accountant is working to prepare? Whatever we need from that client on a monthly basis, we can then set it up to retrieve that information. Okay. Um, we've got like the we're able to you know queries from from the client. We're able to answer um, through any channel that they they want. So that you know if it's WhatsApp, email, you know any chosen channel. Um, so it's more of a, a flow. There's, there's, there's more of a flow between the client and the accountant, and it doesn't all rely on human, a, a human remembering or a reminder. Okay, so for example, the example I was giving was point of sale. I've got all these transactions happening in the business. Obviously, every day I've got the, the uh, uh, final numbers of all those transactions How's AI playing a role in getting that? Uh, you brought up WhatsApp, you brought, brought up email, but but my point is, is I've got all of this information. Let's say my point of sale is is um, something that is integrating with the accounting software. Where's AI playing into this? Wherever you want it, it to be retrieved from. So wherever okay. you would go to retrieve that, you can get AI to do that. You can set up a workflow to actually do that. So whatever a human could, you know, log in to here, take this, then you can get AI to do that for you. And when you say log in and AI, is there a particular platform that you would suggest that we use? Is there a particular uh, software that you would recommend? It's just a lot of the, um, I use the UEPATH um, platform and that would that would sit, but it would be sat with the, the SaaS company so they would do that, but then you would, the, the bot or whatever you would be using would be just, it would just be just logging in on your PC. So when we, when you were talking before about the security, we're actually only working within your, your domain, but it's just the, the actual software that we're using. Yeah. Now you recommended earlier not using ChatGPT. I, I mentioned BARD. Which one are you recommending that we use? The, the AI companies that I work with, they mainly use on the, the UiPath platform. Okay. Um, so they would be the ones that, you know, that I've seen and I would, I would recommend. 
So you're suggesting that someone like me or my listeners would actually create a profile on this? I, I would always suggest that you go, I think what you said before, Roger, was, you know, about not us not doing the other lifting. I would always recommend going to an AI company and working with them because you always need that with anything. You always need that backup as well. Okay. And these, these solutions that are out there, a, a quite, you know, you can get like a, a bot that could do 6,000 transactions a month for like 150 pounds a month. So the very, very cheap solutions, but, but you have the backing of the AI company. Do you have an example of an AI company that we might want to interact with that's familiar with the accounting space that we would be able to, you know, make requests and they would understand what we're trying to discuss? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, the ones that I work with mainly are UK ones. Uh-huh. Um, well, that's fine. So, <laughs> so the one that, the one that's um, very much into the the bookkeeping side of it and the reconciliation, uh, a company called Synergy IO. Okay, so Synergy IO, yeah. you're suggesting that what they do is what they are client facing. Would my client have to interact with them, or is it just? You. As an accounting professional, I would interact with them. Yeah. Whatever whatever you do for your clients, you could get them to look at and then say, how much of this could we can we automate? So how much of what you're doing can we can we automate? And they would come in and look at look at that and map that out for you. Okay. So um let's imagine that I'm using that that company. What would I expect to experience? Um, is there a particular process that you've experienced that you would suggest is a common one? Um, it would be, they would do kind of a, a workshop scenario with you. So we would go in and say, I would always suggest to any accountant, just start small, just give, get, get that confidence in the, the product and see what it could do. So we would start what it would what is your biggest challenge at the moment? Um, like say a bookkeeper I'm working with now, she's she wants to scale, but it would mean that she's struggling to take staff on. That's another thing with accountants. They're struggling for staff. I don't know, it's, it's definitely like that in the UK. Um, so she, um, what we're training a bot um, to do what uh, the bookkeeper, a new be- bookkeeper could do. So clearly the bot that you're using is outside of the platform she's already utilizing. So you mentioned zero earlier. So rather than using zero and leveraging the AI that they're building into that platform, you're saying use a bot that you can actually create and manage and train yourself. And that bot then basically using AI learns and becomes better and more efficient at the tasks that you're asking it to perform. Is that what you're describing? No, you you would you'd go to say some delight synergy. You would go to so Rachel would go to to synergy and said, you know, I need I want this bot to do this bookkeeping, some audit leg work as well. She spoke about. So we look we look at what she's what she's got, what she's trying to achieve, and what she needs to do. And then we train the bot, train the bot, and the bot gets on, and the bot the bot does it and then it's doing it as soon as the work comes in whatever that might be whether it was an email whether it's um the bank feed coming into the accounting package the bot recognizes and it goes in and and does what what it needs to do interesting and then there's a continual then you can do a continual kind of training and then add to that to that bot so how do you collaborate with the accountant to tailor that AI solution to meet their needs? And how does how does that eventually resolve the problem? Yeah, there is some time. There's this time at upfront, definitely, to actually look at um, what you want to do. Like Rachel will, work, will, will do a, a workshop and she will work with us and then we will get on and train the bot and then trial the bot just make sure that we haven't missed anything and then it will just it will just run in the background and how how do you how have you experienced the accountant speaking to the client to explain what's going to happen what kind of conversation is that 
there's there's no need to because all we're doing it's just transactional work that we're doing for the client okay so the client is not affected in any way so you're not communicating with the client that this bot is involved you're not they're not becoming aware of that no because within it's just within the accounting practice so if i'm doing a vat return for a client mm -hmm. or a um, a set of accounts, whatever I can train the bot to do, whatever transactional work I need to do. So it's not client facing. I think there's an opportunity for accountants to actually introduce to um, their clients when it's beneficial to introduce bots into, you know, into their finance departments, depending on on the size of the the company that they're working with. Yeah. Well, I think that's good to know because from an accounting perspective, it's kind of like offshore accounting. To what level do you actually educate your client as to what services you're using to get the work done, whether it be the AI or offshore accounting? It's basically a non-client facing interaction that yeah. we're talking about here. So I think, I think that's a very good thing. Um, what key elements are making accountants actually see what you're doing as viable? I mean, what are, what are the accounting, what's the accounting profession noticing that is making a difference well i think the so the they are struggling in the uk for to get people so it's come at a great time for them but i mean if you think that you can get you can save about 50 hours a month with a bot um doing you know your doing the, the bookkeeping um that's that's one of the benefits the other benefit that, that we're seeing is um, a lot of the accountant's time is you kind of taking up with queries, you know, what's my VAT, what's my tax, when's it due, all this kind of stuff. The, um, the, the questions back and forth, that's something that, that AI can take care of for um, the accountant, so that can be done. And when I mentioned Omnichannel before, it can be done by whatever method they mm -hmm. want so if your if your uh, client was messaging you and saying oh can you tell me what my vat is this month the, we could retrieve that information and go straight back to the client and give them that information by whatsapp or messenger email whatever channel they they yeah. want to use well i want to go a little bit off topic uh, topic marie because i, I want to know with your perspective of ai and what you've seen what has impressed you about AI? What has caught your attention that has just been unexpected and surprising? I think the time it's it's taken really. I think the chat went to a couple of years ago. People nobody would kind of listen um, with that. Well, I'm saying nobody, but not a lot of people were listening. The chat GPT thing has brought it to the attention of people, but chat GPT is only a very small kind of area that is a useful tool but like i said before i wouldn't for for companies i think you need to look at what tools are available to you within the ai space and use those interesting and obviously all of us have different experiences with ai some of it's personal some of it's you know just for entertainment some of it's professional where do you see AI making a big difference here in the next, say, year or two or three that none of us are really recognizing or seeing? What have you noticed that's really caught your attention? The thing that's catching my attention, and I think it's going to be great, when we were saying about the advisory, so it's going to give us a really great um, in-depth kind of analysis of our clients, our ideal clients, you know, get to know your client, um, not just sign people up, take them on, but let's really look at like, what's that client's ambition? Um, when do they want to retire? What do they want, you know, what is what do they want their business to look like? And then we can really do kind of detailed uh, predictive analysis with AI to actually get that client to that point. And I think that's where, where we've been lacking as accountants because of time constraints now if we can really get behind the advisory it's going to be so much bring so much benefit to um clients and using generative ai within your own data 
Um, you know, lots of people are talking data. We're going to become more data centric, human centric as well. So I think that I think those are the massive pluses. I think we've just become very robotic in the um, the accounting space. Interesting, because those of my listeners that are familiar with uh, a lot of my thoughts, they'll know that I agree wholeheartedly with you that we need as a profession to move more into the advisory space and tools that enable us to be more advisory in our services are going to be hugely valuable simply because I think that's what our clients need to understand is the therefore what from all this compliance work that we've done. We've we've done everything that we, we can to help them in preparing those financial reports. They've got a good, clear per, uh, picture of what's happened in the past. They lived it. They know it. But therefore, what? How does this apply to them moving forward? How does this become relevant in the day-to-day work that they're doing within the business? And so in that advisory space, to your point, it's helping them actually with the end in mind, helping them actually prepare for that exit and getting the biggest valuation that they can accomplish. So um, that that actually really resonates with me. So can you share a success story or case study that illustrates how these AI solutions have actually been embraced and helpful to accountants? I mean, the biggest the biggest time save now is within you know the the on the bookkeeping side, the transactional. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on the um, reporting, the reporting side as well, because it's giving accountants who might not have the time to offer that that kind of that service, that reporting to clients, giving them a bit more, you know, the predictive analysis that we can do. So it, it's really in that space where the the ones that are moving away from not moving away from compliance because we can't, but again, the compliance done quick and as efficient as they can, and then looking at how we, how we can be with that client, how we can advise. And also the other thing is like teams of how many accountants, will rather, the, the way that um, accountants are going to work, we're going to be more customer client centric. Um, because we won't be sat doing the the transactional. So the ones that I'm seeing are, are, are really kind of getting into that space and becoming more the the management accountant of the of the companies that they're working with. And from that is obviously, I think a lot of accountants too that they're, they're doing more advisory than they know they're doing, but not. Um, charging for it, basically. You know, that's very, very true. There's a lot of compliance work that's being done, but at the same time, there's a lot of free advisory work that's being Mm. offered. And so uh, it'd be nice for us as an accounting profession to get a little bit more clear on what the distinction between the two are, and more importantly, get paid for those services that we're providing that are beyond the compliance work that we're doing. So um, definitely recommend all of that. Uh, here's what I'd like to do. Uh, on a personal note, you, you're uh, interested in going j- to Japan. I'm, I'm curious, what are you planning on doing there? What, what's the draw to Japan of all places? Um it's somewhere that, that's always fascinated me. I think with the um, the different the culture, definitely, and having to struggle with you know a lot of places you go, everybody speaks English, and um, so I think just having to kind of to get around a place that is you know completely completely different. Um, I think Japan just just really. So, do you travel with fr- family or friends? Yeah, with family, yeah. Family, very good. And so uh, yeah. do you have the trip scheduled at this point or is it just a... I've not got it scheduled. I'm just kind of, I'm going to work it out what I want to do. I don't know whether to cruise around and then just visit places. Uh-huh. That's, that's the thought that I've had. Um, one of my um, colleagues has mentioned, well, you know, the trains are great and why not just get around on, on the trains and that. So yeah. I'm just trying to, but I really want to, to make the most of it, I really want to kind of get my, I always, like I'll sit with a, a map and I'll look and then I'll look what each place has to offer and, and then make my mind up from then. So it'll be very kind of detailed and mapped out for that trip. 
Very good. All right. Well, I do want to thank you for your insights today and your your perspective as it relates to AI. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of wrap this up real quickly here. And in doing so, just kind of give some highlights of what it is I thought we discussed. Uh, the first thing is, is as an offer, we definitely do have here the opportunity for you to go to the episode description. And in the episode description, Marie's been very kind to actually offer 30 minutes of her time to do a basic advisory discussion with you where she can uncover custom solutions for your business as it relates to AI and see what it is you can do to leverage AI in your business. So if you're interested in that, go to the episode description and clearly schedule a time to speak with her. But at the same time, we were talking about advisory work and your growth into that space. If you're interested in doing more with your clients and more importantly, actually step beyond the compliance work and get paid for what you can do and in a CFO advisory capacity, you definitely want to check out the episode description. There you're going to find some information regarding a book called Red to Black. It is the how-to guide for accounting professionals to help them address cash flow situations that exist in business, and it enables you to become for your clients that profit and growth expert that they need. In doing so, you can also check out the book In the Black. It's nine principles to apply in your business as well as your clients to ensure profitability, and most importantly, make profit intentional and deliberate. In that space, you can also find out more about what it is you can become for your clients a profit and growth expert. There's a book that you can check out that is called your strategic accountant. It's what it is you can do for your clients so that they can see you as that person that they need so that they can run their businesses successfully and profitably. You can, in fact, be that individual that can make the difference. And I encourage you to check out these different resources to enable you to move beyond the CFO or excuse me, beyond the compliance work and into that CFO advisory space that we were discussing earlier. Now, in addition to that, one of the things that I want to do is just kind of recap the conversation. Marie, with her experience having sold her business, back in 2009 and being introduced to AI, clearly saw the technology and how it could be applied in the accounting space and has spent time actually sharing with us today some of those applications and how we can train these robots to literally take care of those various tasks in our office that are being done in a redundant way. And in doing so, kind of streamline the process and help us become a lot more efficient and ultimately being able to provide CFO and advisory services if we're so choosing. Now, one of the things that I'd also want to point out is Marie was able to point that this addressed some of the staffing issues that some are facing where we're unable to find quality employees. Well, maybe the bots are the solution where we can train them and have them do a lot of this automated work that we can actually identify. So check out a little bit more about that. I thought this was an interesting discussion because I know everyone is interested in AI and how it's impacting business. So hopefully you found this at least somewhat insightful in your business and how you might be able to consider applying these principles in your business. So Marie, do you have a closing thought, something you'd like to share with the listeners? Yeah, I just think that, you know, to to really think about getting away from, you know, the transactional and, you know, get into the advising space, because this is really what, what our clients want, what the clients want from us. And I think it's a great time to to do that. Perfect. Well, Marie, again, thank you for your time. I'm glad we had you on the show. Obviously, the AI perspective is something that many of us are interested in learning more about. As for the listeners, definitely want to encourage you to check out our free resources. These are essentially tools that we've found and made available to assist you as you're working to build the premier accounting firm in your area. In order to take advantage of these, you want to go to universalaccounting.com and check out the free resources. They range from ebooks, to courses and materials, white papers and such that you can actually use to apply in your business, whether it be with your own company or that of the clients that you're working with. I also want to invite you to GrowCon. GrowCon is an annual event. It is a live event for owners of bookkeeping, accounting, and tax businesses to come and listen to the experts as we learn how to actually work on our business. And in that time, actually interact with peers, finding out what is working and what we're each doing to be successful. And lastly, to meet the team here at Universal Accounting. It's where you're able to actually be in business for yourself, but not by yourself with Universal. So you want to check that out. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast 
podcast. Obviously, each and every week we're releasing new episodes, hearing from the experts what it is that they suggest we be doing to work on our business as it ranges from marketing to selling, client onboarding, tech stacks, mental health, client relations, and the list goes on and on. For more information about the highlights from those, you can actually go to universalaccounting.com and there in the podcast section, find the highlights. These are essentially collections of the best of that you can find on various topics that we've created as playlists that I would encourage you to go back and binge or binge listen to. But at the same time, don't forget, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the podcast. And lastly, if you'd like to apply these principles in your business, or more importantly, learn more about each of these topics, visit us at universalaccountingschool.com or give us a phone call. You can reach us at 801-265-3777. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. Take care and be safe out there.